Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous spring day in December once again here in the collapse of global industrial civilization <coughs> here deep in the heart of Texas. It is Friday, December 6, 2019 on this gorgeous day. And you have somehow stumbled into Collapse Chronicles. My name is Sam Mitchell, and this is my little co-pilot. Sancho Panza bringing you news of the collapse of this planet. And since it is Friday, we're going to do what we do every Friday and head over to Manga Bay. But before we do that, I just want to send out a big thank you don't know if you've ever heard this name, <coughs> to kind-hearted, he's, I'll have to just call him one of my angels, the mysterious Marty Knudsen, uh, <laughs> for supporting the work that I do here on YouTube with his kind PayPal donation to collapsechronicles at gmail.com. Marty, uh, I love you, brother, whoever you are. I wish I had about 10 Marty Knudsen's in my life. And, uh, anyway, I'm just going to move on. Uh, we do thank you, Marty and anybody else who has ever supported my work. With that pleasant task behind me, since it is Friday, we are going to do what we do every Friday, and that is head over to, uh, what I continually call the single best chronicle of the collapse. Just the weekly update on the collapse of a planet <coughs> from mangabay.com from uh, proud father uh, Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at mangabay.com uh, just <coughs> you know, romping around a collapsing planet to bring us news. All right, and we're going to start, well, I guess at the top of the world and the bottom of the world, with Spain in the middle, their lead-off story, world is fast losing its cool, polar regions in deep trouble. As representatives of the world, world's nations gather in Madrid at COP25 <coughs> this week, a comprehensive new report shows how climate change is disproportionately affecting the Arctic and Arctic. The Arctic especially is warming tremendously faster than the rest of the world. <coughs> if the planet and of course, when the planet, there's no if about it, when the planet as a whole sees a rise in average temperatures of 2 degrees Celsius, the polar regions will be the hardest hit ecosystems on Earth, bringing drastic <coughs> changes to the regions. By the time the lower latitudes hit that mark, it's projected the Arctic we'll see temperature increases of 4 degrees Celsius. In fact, polar regions are already seeing quickening sea ice melt, permafrost thaws, meaning the methane bomb, record wildfires, ice shells calving, <coughs> and impacts on cold adapted species ranging from Arctic polar bears to Antarctic penguins. And what starts in cold areas does not stay there. Sea level rise and temperature and temperate extreme weather are both linked to polar events. Yes, the only way out of the trends escalating toward a climate catastrophe at the polls is for nations to begin aggressively reducing greenhouse gas emissions now. Yes. And embracing sustainable 
green energy technologies. Oh yes, it remains to be seen whether the negotiators at COP25 will embrace such solutions. Okay, I guess from the North Pole to Sub-Saharan Africa, <coughs> here we're going to go to Zambia. Zambia, where we see a new real estate development devouring a forest reserve. This is the protected area, <coughs> this forest reserve. Oh yeah, outside of Zambia's capital, Lusaka, has already been more than cut in half uh, to make way for housing, and I love this term, lifestyle developments. Yes, the new development is also pumping sewage into the Chalbamba River, contaminating the fish and water that local communities rely on. And you will not believe this. <coughs> Top government officials hmm, have been named among the recipients of some of the lots inside the protected area including the Vice President of Zambia, the Chief Justice of Zambia, and various government ministers. Hmm. Activists mounting a legal challenge against the project uh, are not doing that well in court and, have, and are skeptical about getting justice in Zambia, Africa, in what they call an engineered case. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. A, uh, an engineered case in Zambia. This is Manga Bay's, apparently with no sense of irony, uh, their spin on the this absolutely hilarious story, you know, it's sounding like it's coming out of the onion about these uh, these apocalyptists putting loudspeakers uh, recordings of what a healthy coral reef is supposed to sound like. They're putting these. Uh, loudspeakers in these wasted, ruined coral reefs to try to trick fish into believing that the coral reef is, uh, is actually a healthy reef. Uh, and, and Manga Bay reporting this with a straight face. Boosting fish populations using sounds of healthy coral reefs has the potential to help nurse degraded reefs back to health, researchers say. You know, guys, on some level, you know, I say when you lose your sense of humor here in the doomosphere, you have lost it all. <coughs> that is one of the saddest stories I have seen. Uh, in years. <coughs> okay, what is our, right here in the good old U.S. of A, what is our National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration up to? They're getting ready to reopen fishing grounds off the U.S. West Coast. Yes. <coughs> Next year, uh, the fishing grounds where fish populations have recovered will be reopened. About 3,000 square miles that have been closed to bottom trawling for ground fish will be reopened when the changes take effect including 2,000 square miles 
of the Rockfish Conservation Area of California and Oregon that have been off limits to bottom trawling since 2002. There you go. From uh, Rockfish getting ready to be trawled. Let's go over there to Sri Lanka. What is going on with the Olive Ridley Sea Turtle? Sri Lanka's Olive Ridley Turtles face myriad threats. <clears throat> with the main nesting season for Olive Ridley Sea Turtles getting underway, the species faces a range of threats, both in the water and on the beaches of Sri Lanka and in every other country on the planet. Um, 32 turtles trapped in shrimp fishing nets have recently been r rescued. Uh, marine turtles in Sri Lankan waters often end up entangled in nets <coughs> posing a serious threat to their survival. Sea turtles worldwide are seriously affected by the fisheries industry with millions killed every year, which is just one of the millions of reasons uh, I do not eat seafood. Okay, what's going on there in Indonesia? Uh, Indonesia zoning plan hurts fishermen, yes, hurts fishermen while favoring coal and oil. Hmm, imagine that. Environmental activists have criticized a zoning plan for coastal areas in East Kalimantan meant to help resolve territorial disputes between local communities and business interests. Take a uh, wild guess who won that dispute. They contend the plan benefits the coal, oil, gas, and palm oil plantation industries at the expense of local fishing communities. Yes, do you think so? Anyway, as long as we're going over <coughs> to Indonesia, how to identify corruption red flags in Indonesian land deals Follow the permits. Why don't you just follow the bulldozers? Or why don't you follow the wildfires? You know, just follow the smoke. So if you want to identify corruption, red flags, and Indonesian land deals, or any other uh, land deals on the planet, corruption is rife in Indonesia's plantation and mining sectors. Huh, especially when it comes to the issuance of permits. There you go. So let's look at one of these. I'm just going to pick out one where we see Indonesian officials charged in $1.6 million bribes for permits scheme. Two land agency officials have been charged with taking 1.6 million dollars in bribes in exchange for granting oil palm plantation concessions spanning an area of 500 acres in Borneo. Yes, um, the case highlights the dangers of the government's continued refusal to allow greater transparency in the permit issuance process. 
uh, and watchdog group claims that corruption in the palm, palm oil industry could get worse. Hmm. Imagine that. Corruption in the palm oil industry. Never thought about that. And uh, guys, I've I'm just skipping over a lot of these. You really need to subscribe to this uh, newsletter. What's going on with primates in the Amazon, in, including the humans? <clears throat> Amazon primates face barriers in responding to climate change. Climate change will make the current ranges of most Amazon primates un inhabitable in the coming decades, forcing them to move. But primates face barriers to moving, such as rivers, <coughs> well, I guess that they can't swim across, and deforestation, which limit their ability to migrate. And you will not believe this, if species being forced by climate change to migrate are not able to find new habitats, their populations as well as the habitat they support will suffer. Hmm, never thought of that. <clears throat> okay, what's going on with horseshoe crabs? At least the horseshoe crabs in Indonesia. A court in Indonesia has sentenced a boat captain to 15 months in jail and fined him $3,500 for attempting to traffic thousands of dead horseshoe crabs to Thailand. Horseshoe crabs have existed for nearly half a billion years but today, they face rapidly declining populations across their range as a result of overfishing for use as food and bait and the production of biomedical products derived from their blood. And don't forget habitat loss from coastal development and erosion. <clears throat> Now, we've all heard, well, some of us have heard of the famous AMOC, you know, which is this ocean current in the Atlantic Ocean uh, being messed up by climate change. But did you realize that there's a similar one going on over there in the Pacific Ocean, where we find the warming of Indo-Pacific waters disrupting weather worldwide report finds. Uh, this is a swath of warm water in the Indo-Pacific Ocean which has doubled in size. Yes. Um, the uh, current affects the timing, variability, and strength of rainfall in many parts of the world, such as the monsoon system. Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> okay. We now have floating solar power farms in reservoirs behind hydroelectric dams. Oh boy. Did you realize that to arrest the climate crisis that we need a democratic overhaul? Uh-huh. A democratic overhaul of global industrial civilization. I'm sure we're going to get that. Anyway, guys, uh, I am sky I'm skipping over a lot of these stories. Okay, what is the more news from COP25? 
COP25 may, in fact, put climate at greater risk by failing to address forest. Yes, COP25, originally slated for Brazil, then Chile, but moved to, to Madrid, comes as global temperatures, sea level rise, wildfires, coral bleaching, extreme drought, and storms all break new planetary records. But delegates at COP25 have set a relatively low bar for the summit. Yes, do you think so? Um, experts warn that global forest conservation is not yet being actively incentivized. Yes, a possible lapse apparently backed by Brazil and the government of Jair Bozo Nero, which has declared its plan to develop the Amazon Basin, the world's largest remaining rainforest and vital to sequestering carbon to curb climate change. Um, COP25 also seems unlikely to address the UN biomass carbon accounting loophole which allows nations to convert obsolete coal plants to burn wood pellets to produce energy. Scientists warned that biomass burning far from being carbon neutral is actually worse than burning coal. Do you think so? <clears throat> Shrinking, let's go back up to the Arctic. Shrinking sea ice in the Arctic opens new pathways for animal, animal diseases. Scientists have discovered that periods of minimal sea ice in the Arctic have been followed by spikes in a deadly disease that affects seals, sea lions, and sea otters. Uh, the odds that the animals would be affected by the disease were more than nine times higher uh, when the sea ice is uh, at critical lows. All right. Uh, well, here's what Indonesia must do. Indonesia must stop building new coal plants by 2020 to meet climate goals. I think 2020 is in three weeks. <clears throat> so, Indonesia must stop building coal-fired power plants in the next three weeks. Huh, if it is to keep up its commitments to the Paris Climate Goals, the Indonesian Climate Goals. Yes, uh, that scenario looks highly unlikely, though with 39 coal plants presently under construction in Indonesia and 68 more announced as coal-fired capacity is set to double in Indonesia over the next decade. <clears throat> Here is this uh, hilarious study uh, this hilarious story. Brazilian President Jair Bozo Nero claims Leonardo DiCaprio funded Amazon fires. Yes. Uh, Bozo Nero offered no evidence to support his claims 
as deforestation has increased dramatically since Bozo Nero took office. Uh, how many? Let's do one more, guys. We're going to wind up in, uh, in our own country in the Mojave Desert. We started out at the North Pole. Let's wind up in the Mojave Desert where we find heat stress is causing desert bird populations to collapse. Hmm. Talk about chronicling the collapse. <clears throat> Sites in the Mojave Desert in the western U.S. surveyed by ecologists have lost an average of 43% of their breeding bird species. New research suggests that higher temperatures have increased the daily water needs of birds, which could further decimate their populations if climate change worsens. Do you think so? 43% of the bird species in the Mojave Desert have already collapsed and it could get worse. But anyway, uh, it is a gorgeous spring day here in December in the heart of Texas. Uh, and the little dog and I, we need to get out and enjoy this gorgeous spring day in Austin, Texas. And we encourage you to do the same, but before you get out there, if you enjoyed this video, uh, one thing you need to do is subscribe to mongabay.com and if you could spend a few seconds to thumb up this video if you liked it or even spend a few seconds to thumb it down if you did not and obviously if you would like to subscribe to Collapse Chronicles we would love to have you aboard. We got a, do we, you have ear mites? Do we have to get out your ear mite? medicine. Bye guys.